Hey everybody, it's Chris from Off The Road again. Uh, just kind of wanted to drop a little intro to this week's version of the podcast. We recorded with Vaughn Gittin Jr. and Lauren Healy uh, of RTR Vehicles and Fun Haver. Uh, we talk a lot about Ultra 4, uh, King of the Hammers, and we fought technology the entire episode. So we do have a pretty good chunk of an episode for you. Um, but there's about 15 to 20 minutes at the beginning where my internet didn't want to work. Ross's internet didn't want to work. The internet in general just hated everything. And so we're kind of missing the early part of the episode, uh, but we'll get into most of it. And hopefully you enjoy episode 200 of the Off the Road Again podcast with Vaughn Yitton Jr., Lauren Healy, and then Ross myself. We're just, I don't really do much. They, they talk a lot, which is great to actually have Vaughn and Lauren on together because we just let them tell stories and it was great. So hope you guys enjoy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. So, so for the 4,400 race, again, you know, I mentioned, you know, going into it, especially after qualifying, I mean, Lauren qualified third, I qualified 19th ish. And my goal was just to be like, just in the top 10, leaving the line. Um, because I've, I've learned from experience that pushing too hard and making a dumb mistake and starting 80th sucks. So I was like, not going out there to set the world on fire. I wanted that benefit of corrected time and ended up exactly where I was, you know, Lauren in general, you know, accidentally gets third place when, you know, he just drives 50%. You know, and um, and um, Must so nice. you know, I was so pumped going in the race. You know, like it was one of those mornings. I felt amazing. Got a nice workout in. Just you know, we're spoiled by the Ladukes. Uh, we had them cooking for the team this year, and it was just like everything leading up was just perfect. You know, it's just one of those race days. You're like, yeah, yeah. Not like mm -hmm. any race day is like, oh man, but it's like everything was together. And um, I leave the line and I'm behind um, Cody Addington and Casey Curry. And by the time we get to Kurt Turkey Claw, I'd already made up the 30 seconds on them. And we get into Turkey Claw and I'm following Cody a little bit too close in Turkey Claw and did not get the right line. Like I didn't take the proper trajectory to be on the inside of the dumb rock. Um, that you need to be on the inside of around like one of that first like tight turn mm -hmm. and um, was like, oh, I'm in my 4,400 truck. I'm just going to monster truck through this anyway. It's fine. <laughs> whatever. And As blew my drive shaft apart three Dude. miles into the race. Oh. At literally the other side of the course, like the 20 point. feet away from where I broke the axle in the 46. And I'm just like, oh that, my God, what that is that? That section has it out for you. Dude, I, it's, got it's, a like, it's an easy section. It's not, it's not like the rest of the race was so much harder. So, you know, so I, yeah, I'm sitting there and I mean, it takes us 45 minutes to change the drive shaft. We got literally every, and I should say my co-driver. And for the record, a lot of people were like, Vaughn sat in his truck for 45 minutes. What a jerk. Couldn't get out and help his co-driver. I asked literally 10 times if I could get out and help. But he <laughs> wanted me in the truck. He wanted me in the truck because we have a, a diff, like uh, a diff skid protector that made it almost impossible for him to get to the bolts. So I had to like inch the truck a bit back and forth so he so get to the bolts. Spin. Yeah, and it. But long story short, it took forty five minutes. You know, Jeremy oh. had never done it. Jeremy Dickinson, who was my uh, new new co driver um, for Hammers, and um, and uh, he, you know, it just took us time. Not putting it on him, but it's just a stupid thing. It's tight. We got yeah. trucks, the whole entire field passing us, bumping into us while he's under the truck, running over my tire. Like it was just. Oh Sketchy. my gosh. It was, it felt like three hours, but we know the exact yeah. time it was 45 minutes. Um, so we got the drive shaft fixed and went on to have the most unbelievable King of the hammers that I ever had. <laughs> um, it's just super fast in the desert, crushed it through the rocks. In fact, our lap three, um, if I'm reading the times and stuff, right, was the fastest lap three out of anybody. 
which is a huge, oh, wow. huge thing for me because the rocks are, you know, I've gotten good at them, right? I've been doing this now for seven years um, and I've gotten good, better every year, but never really knew the pace. And I was always off a bit off pace. And um, once the drive shaft happened, I was just like, okay, this is an, a great opportunity to learn. Like going mm-hmm. and getting a win is going to be very tough. Um, and so I just pushed as hard as I could. And I learned the pace that I didn't, you know, that I didn't burn the truck down in the desert, but I was still extremely fast. I think ultimately I was about 10 minutes off of Lauren's pace in the desert. Uh, if I go back and do the math. And for those of you that have seen any videos of Lauren's pace, trophy truck pace in the desert, (laughs) um, that means, uh, it means a lot. So, um, and, and so I, you know, I just, I just was in a really nice flow and all the work came together and all the years of that I've been putting to this came together. And, um, we were able to go from letting the whole field pass us plus call it 10 or 15 minutes to moving all the way back up to sixth place. And, you know, there's all these woulda, coulda, shouldas every time at hammers but we went back and did the math. We had a 45 minute stop at Turkey claw. And then we had another 15, 20 minute stop that we would have been ahead of in uh, outer limits. Had we not have done that. And that would have put us on pace to get the win. Now I'm sure there's Hmm. five other people that have a woulda, coulda, shoulda, but Mm -hmm. in the end, you know, it's always fun to look at that math. And for me as somebody that's like, has not been at the wind pace at hammers yet. I'm extremely proud of the accomplishment despite the setback, you know? So for me looking at the big picture, you know, I always believe that there's an answer or a bigger reason for the things that are happening. And this was my year to confirm myself to myself that I now have that pace. And now it is now Mm. possible to achieve that dream of, of winning King of the hammer. So all in all, I'm, I'm super proud of the um, the performance, um, despite the stupid mistake in the beginning, which was 100% my fault. Uh, it was just a misjudgment. Um, I didn't see the rock because I was so close to Cody. And when I went monster trucking, it was just a perfect position to just eat the drive shaft. Mm-hmm. And um, so, yeah. And, and so... You know, so so as a segue to giving it to Lauren, here I am coming in the last lap and we're pushing, trying to make up all the time we can make. And I have my my radio isolated, even though me and Lauren were on the same radio. I had no idea what was going on, Lauren. You know, I asked a couple times, you know, and, and um, you know, Jeremy did mention to me that Lauren's doing good. He was out front and stuff like that. But I really didn't know the details come the last lap. So here mm-hmm. we come through the sand wash where, you know, I can see the entrance to resolution and all of a sudden I see Lauren's truck. At first I thought it was Jeff Wagner's truck, which is another one of the, one of our old truck Broncos. And then I saw, I'm like, Oh crap, that's Lauren. And my heart just dropped. I'm still like focused on getting into resolution. Um, I've got Mm -hmm. a flat at this moment. So I'm like focused on getting through the sand while trying to keep the, keep the tires on the truck. Um, which by the way, getting a flat with these Nitto trail grapplers, like it's serious talent. Like these things are like Dude. unbelievable. <laughs> so I mean, I'm, I'm that good. I can like make these things go flat. <laughs> just putting it out there. Um, I have never seen a flat on a trail grappler on a, an, in a non race circumstance for, in real for reference, you know, <laughs> it's hard. Like, it's, yeah, it's they're, real they're, hard to do. they're beefy. Yeah. It's real hard to do. Uh, but like I said, we were talented out here. Yeah. You know, I'm, working, we're I'm skilled. I'm not saying what I'm skilled at, but I'm skilled. <laughs> and uh, so, um, you know, so I pass Lauren and I get in there and get the win. Or sorry, get get the checker, uh, not the win. That's in my dreams, just so you know. Yep. <laughs> um, but I, I that, um, speaking into reality. Uh, so um, oh, yeah, I get there to the finish line and, and find that, you know, I'm, I get there and I expected to see like, a lot more trucks there. And then we get there and find out where we're sixth. And I was pretty pumped and pretty proud. And, and then Lauren comes over and, um, 
the look on his, I had no idea, right. What, what, is, what had transpired. And I look at Lauren and I'm like, what, what happened? Why is your truck there? And he's like, oh, I broke my transmission input shaft. And I'm Oops. like, well, what? I'm like, well, where were you? And he's like, Oh dude, 15 minutes from the wind. Oh. I'm like, and I just like, I, you know, seeing in his face, seeing in my face is just one of those moments that's like, yeah, just a punch. So anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll transition to him for his, his hammers experience, <laughs> but that was mine. And, um, I think leaving hammers, I'm extremely excited. You know, Lauren and I both were like, can we just do this again tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Trucks are ready. Put an input shaft in his truck, you know, prep mine a bit and let's yeah. go. It's a long so, year to wait, huh? Yeah. So. Yeah, it is all all the hard work that goes into that race. You're just like, man, give me one more chance at this right now. Let's let's go. But it uh like I it it was an amazing year. I I had so much fun. Um, I don't know if you saw, but I got to do the youth U, UTV race with my son. Yeah. Yep. So that to yep. me was like one one of the really like I'll look back on my life and remember that day forever. That your that eleven year old son. My to set the stage, so. not not like driver age, you know, like right. 18, 16, like 11. So the plan was for my daughter who had raced side-by-sides before. We've done some desert racing and stuff together. She broke her collarbone snowboarding with me the weekend we were leaving. <laughs> oh, no. I had, I had bought a razor. I had, you know, paid the entry fees, paid for the insurance. So my son's been asked in a race, but he wasn't old enough. Not like they were going to check IDs at the start finish line before we go start racing. And I asked him, I'm like, dude, are you, are you ready to do this? Like, you really think you can take on King of the Hammers? Like, I thought we'd do something small. And he's like, I can do it. Let's go. And so for him. we built up this booster seat and put on 10 inch extensions on the pedals oh so he could God. touch the pedals and, uh, and went out and pre ran about half the desert course. And he did amazing. He was reading the desert really well, had it, had it figured out and I was like all right let's try it let's do it and uh you know we we went out had a perfect race everything went phenomenal um he finished mid pack for his first race ever against 17 year old boys like i i didn't have any expectations of him coming out and trying to win the race amazing but he went and drove 80 miles you know at it at race pace so it Holy to me shit. that was that was that was the higher the you know the emotional roller coaster that I kind of been talking about. That that was a great way to start off the week, and uh, awesome. and and an experience I'll remember forever. Yep. And now he's addicted. That's all he talks about. He's like, when are we going racing again? Or are we racing this weekend? Like every morning when he wakes up, he's like, when are we racing again? So yeah, that was a more <laughs> expensive, uh, more expensive right. day yeah. than you thought it was, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> But you know, if he wants to wants to do it, it's a cool opportunity. And I'm not getting any younger, so you know, somebody's gonna have to carry on the fun haver torch at some point. So you know, yeah. Bond's Bond's got some boys that I'm I'm sure are gonna love race trucks as well. And <laughs> and uh, so we <laughs> that's always cool to have that in the back pocket. But yeah, the the 4400 race, you know, started out absolutely amazing. Qualified third. Cade Rod put down a heater. Um, I watched some of his qualifying, and he almost rolled like. 20 times during his qualifying race. And, and I had no interest in trying to do that. As Vaughn mentioned, yeah. starting last place, I've literally started 98th before and, and your chances of winning are, are not great. Um, God. This year with the rain and the weather, the dust got knocked down. So you actually, I mean, as the first time ever, we saw JP win from last place, you know, he came mm -hmm. all the way from 99th and came back and won the race. So this year, if there was a year to do it, with the with the rain and the weather this was the year to do it and all the attrition through the course was insane this year i i've never like it was a battlefield out there and to watch the top guys you know everybody who was leading the race at some point ended up going out so um the the desert the desert lap you know it went really really well for me i like to try to get out front and and kind of set the pace um jason shear and i have have done that a lot over the years and you know, he, he was right behind me. Um, I jumped out front past the, the two guys who qualified in front of me almost immediately, you know, right out of Turkey Claw, passed him and got out front and just set the set the pace for the desert. Um, was going phenomenal, pulled in, you know, grabs, grabbed a little bit of fuel and was running out for lap two and was just getting to the first rock section. So there's this really high speed, fun, rippy, kind of gravelly, uh, chicane road out before you hit the lake bed. And it's my favorite part of the KOH course. And I'm just shred, just 
throwing the truck around, having so much fun. And I hit the lake bed and you're doing about a hundred miles an hour. And I go to throw the truck sideways in the silty lake bed and the truck almost full rotates on me. And I'm like, Oh my oh gosh, I got a flat tire. I didn't feel it. Didn't hit mm-hmm. anything. There just had to have been something sticking out of that gravel that, that, that caught that tire. And so we jump out and we start changing the tire and we're fumbling around a little bit with it. And my co-driver, Jesse's like, there's a ton of fluid underneath the car. So oh what we think happened is when I came off and decelled and on that lake bed that the, the, the pump overran itself a little bit and it overpressured and blew, blew the back out of the steering pump. So we run pressure relief valves in the system and with ultra four, like the steering system's pretty complicated because we take these huge pressure spikes and, uh, and, mm. and we think impacts the, the pump, just the, yep, everything. Yep, yeah. but, but this was just really high speed and, and, uh, and, a, and another learning lesson of, of adding another pressure relief valve into the system really close to the steering pump. But, um, hmm. so when we got back into the car after changing the steering pump, I had pulled in, you know, I, I lost probably five or six positions and got back in, but had zero steering. And at that point, you know, Paul Wolf called his race at that point when he had no steering out in the desert, you, you kind of got to make this call of, of what do you do? But I wasn't ready to give up. Like the car was so fast. So I manhandled it through the, through the rocks, through four rock trails all the way into remote pit too, because you can't, you can either hike out, get parts and come back to your car, but you can't have outside assistance. Your crew can't come to you. You have to get into the pits. Hmm. And so I manhandled it with no steering through, you know, like 10, 15 miles of rock trails. It was just brutal. I thought I broke my wrist, thought I ripped my thumbs off my hands oh my multiple God. times. But we get into the pits and I kept saying, I'm like, man, I can't believe we haven't lost more positions. Like, where is everybody at? We should have been getting blown by by the whole race at this point. And and we really hadn't had hadn't been passed too bad. So we get in, the guys change the steering pump in record time. You know, we change it like 45 minutes, something like that with, with, That's with amazing. losing, <laughs> yeah, with losing that, that time, you know, change the tire. So we, we come out of the pits at, in about 25th place. And I'm like, I'm still running my race. I, I want to put the test time on this new race truck. I want to find out if there's any more failure points. I'm going to run at race pace to win this race. And we'll just see where we fall out. Maybe I get back inside the top 10. Maybe I burn the car down but I'm going to get testing in today. I'm not giving mm-hmm. up. And we just kept picking people off and we're like, okay, there's 23rd. Oh, there's 17th. Oh, uh, we're. And so we came in after lap two and, uh, and they're, they're like, you're back to seventh physically on the course right now. Like you're killing it. Like keep running your pace. JP Gomez, who won the race pulls out of the, out of the pits right in front of me, like 30 seconds. So he's the perfect rabbit to go chase. Mm-hmm. And him and I go out bombing through the desert and he's running a gnarly desert pace. I couldn't pass him. I'm like, I'm gonna go smoke this dude in the desert in about 30 seconds. Couldn't pass him the whole time in the desert. We get into the rocks and, and he, you know, he's, he's not quite at my pace in the rocks. And so I go bombing past him in the rocks. I'm like, all right, this it's, it's race on now at this point. And we start, you know, just keep seeing a few more people that are having problems that are rolled over, you know, Brett Harrell's upside down in the big waterfall. We just keep picking people off and we come by the remote pits too, going into spooners and outer limits. And, and the guys are on the radio yelling at me. They're like, you just passed Casey Curry. He had a problem. You are now physically second on the course. And Kyle Cheney is right in front of you. You can see his dust for physical first place. Go get him. And, uh, you are released. Point, go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I know I've got the secret weapon of our Fox live valve shocks going through the rocks. And so Mike Kim gives us this magic button that, that we're supposed to use, you know, gently to, mm. uh, to, to use in the rock sections that holds the car up and, and it helps us go so fast through the rocks. It's, it's really this huge advantage that Vaughn and I have in our race trucks. And uh, we just hold the button down the whole time through spooners and out of limits. <laughs> like, it just picks up the truck and we just monster truck making passes through around Cheney. And, you know, at, at that point in my head, I know that I had just passed JP not too long ago in the rocks and that I had to put 25 minutes on him 
between that point and the finish line. I had no choice. Like I'm not racing for second place. I'm, mm -hmm. I only want to win this race. And, and yeah, I go out at probably close to a qualifying pace. Like I'm pushing hard through the desert, but I'm not taking huge chances. I'm not, the, the race truck should have taken it. And, and I would go do it again right now. I go run at that pace with no questions, you know, I'm, and we're, we're mobbing, you know, it's, it's time mm -hmm. to go win the race. And, you know, at, at that point we get out, we're a, like Bond was saying, I can see Hammertown. I can see resolution. I'm like two or three miles from the finish line. I'm literally going over my podium speech in my head, ripping across the desert, laughing, giggling with Jesse. I'm asking him to check my pressures, my temperatures. Everything is perfect on the truck. And all of a sudden the dash lights up. No, no transmission pressure, no oh. line pressure. Oh. I'm just like it free revs. It goes from third gear at hundred miles an hour to rum, just, just free revs. Like, oh, yeah. No, oh, no nothing. I'm shifting the transfer case. I'm locking everything out. I'm trying to find reverse because I'll back to the finish line, but I just I had nothing. There was no gears at all whatsoever, and your your heart just sinks that you know you you you've got the race one. It's and you're mm -hmm. two miles from the finish line, but that. King of the Hammers is that way. You know, Randy Slauson experienced a similar transmission failure in the almost the exact same lake bed coming to the mm -hmm. finish line. It's just this race, for whatever reason, throws a thousand obstacles at you that'll that'll prevent you from winning it. And, yep. you know, most races we can control our environment. We can control our trucks. But King of the Hammers just it throws wild cards at you that are that are just what's uh, so what's the trope to win hammers? You still got to beat the desert. Isn't that? Yeah, the joke? I mean, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I, I always say it's lost. It's lost in the desert and won in the rocks. Like that's that's always been my saying, and uh, and I I lost it in the desert. Um, you know, our our transmission builder Barry over at Gearworks and Jeremy, they're the best in the business. They build all the trophy truck transmissions. You know the so it didn't end up being the input shaft that failed. We we thought that's what failed, but it it was actually the pump gears. Um, Barry was almost in tears when I was talking to him about it. Like he was just heartbroken because he cares so much about our team and our program yeah. and winning. And, and, uh, and, and he's like, well, I didn't I, even know that. So the pump, the pump, the pump, gears? the pump gears blew apart. Yep. It shattered the pump gears and he's, they've, they've never even seen it before. They said they've seen it one time with an installation error on the dyno on the transmission dyno. They said they've never seen it in any trophy truck with 1200 horsepower with anything. They're like, this is, and, and I'm like, yeah, well, add another thing to my list that I'm the first one to break. Like, yeah. like learn here, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> the resume builder right there. We call him the hammer. Right. Goddamn. So we, we hike into Hammertown because we want to go support Vaughn. We know he's doing good. Jesse and I, you know, we go get to the finish line and we hike in there and watch everybody come in. And, you know, it, it is, it's, it's a heartbreaker. Um, you know, that, that race is the one I want to win every year. I, I, you can win all the other cool races. That's that's the one that gave me my start. You know that that's the one I'm going to be judged on for the rest of my career, and, and that's the one that I I need that feather in my hat. Mm -hmm. So so it keeps me going. So it keeps me up at night, and you know we keep <laughs> building better and working harder and testing, and and I'm gonna win that race again. It's before <laughs> I'm gonna do it. That's, that's what it is. <laughs> uh, the crazy thing about hammers is it's like people think about racing and they think about controlled never changing environments but hammers is like a moving target because you're i mean you, you guys are the perfect examples of this the, the course changes the conditions change you know the competitors change it, it's not a one-to-one -one where you know you go back and run the same oval track every year you know right it's uh it's it's like a little different. maybe they re redo the asphalt and that's it like <laughs> yeah maybe but yeah it's wild it's wild well glad you guys uh all things considered, um, it seems like it, it went, if nothing else, a very good learning experience and, and positive uh, foundation to further build on from this. Everybody glitch hard. A lot of fun was just me. Yeah, good. A lot good. of learning was done. So um, We lost Chris. So I, I don't know what's happening with our collective internet today. Um mm. Maybe those jokes about Skynet at the beginning weren't so unfounded. Didn't, didn't like it too much. Yeah, right. So, uh, yeah, we're still going. So, why don't we? Uh, why don't we pivot? You wanna? You wanna stick on the desert and talk about the Fun Haver Cup Invitational? That is sure. probably 
uh it's we're currently recording at 11 30 ish eastern Woo-hoo. all right i think so good to go all right so the fun haver golf uh, all right so the fun haver cup golf <laughs> invitational uh was a wild idea that i had to bring some pro and semi-pro golfers out to johnson valley for a uh three hole golf tournament like they never ever experienced and <laughs> like three laps is that the the parallel there uh actually no but um okay yes okay yes yeah perfect that out there. i thank you for that um yes that's exactly what the idea was um <laughs> it was more about how much time we had to do uh one day golf game okay. <laughs> but anyway we made, these golfers had no idea what they were in for um the video just dropped uh and you basically um can go to my youtube channel check it out i uh, just dropped uh, yesterday for those that are watching this today when it comes out but basically uh these golfers show up in johnson valley in a golf cart coming down boone road doo, 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 you know and then um they're greeted by myself and lauren in our caddy outfits along with our respective broncos i had the Bronco RTR Rover. Lauren had the Bronco Fun Runner LT, rest in peace. And um, basically, we were their caddies for a day. And it was Man. basically four golfers. So a team of two, uh, my team versus Lauren's team. And we took them um, to some gnarly places. Uh, we had three holes. One was the uh, Pennzoil Long May We Drive, thousand foot drive. So it was basically a thousand foot hole from the top. Do you guys remember? Well, I know you remember when Lauren jumped off that cliff during qualifying, mm-hmm. that rock Absolutely. wall. So yeah. they teed off at the top of that rock wall for a thousand <laughs> foot into the desert. Wow. So we played that hole. Then we went over to the sand dunes and played the second hole, which was the Bronco, nothing but bunker hole. Then we went to um the top of chocolate thunder and teed off the top of chocolate thunder um and uh for the monster energy uh night hole so it was night it was all neon lit and basically all you saw from the top of the from the the knockoff from the the tee off to the ground was just a big circular ring that you had to you know hit it into oh my god and and it turned this turned into one of the most fun ideas that we've executed. It was so cool because it was fun. These golfers took this serious, you know, and they're really very fun uh, people, true fun. Competitive people will make anything competitive. Oh yeah. But no one knows how a golf ball trajectory works in four feet of sand. No one knows how to tee off of, <laughs> of a cliff. You know, <laughs> yeah, and it was, you know, it was just such a such a completely new thing, which I think we might have turned it into a thing to do more in the future because it was oh, yeah. just so good and it like the the synergy, the vibe, everything just worked so well. And I don't want to spoil it, but what happened at the end, there was no movie trickery. Mm-hmm. It actually happened and basically okay. all of the pros crapped the bed on the final shot and then they both vote they all voted for me and lauren to be the tiebreakers oh, for the teams because it was what's a tie your, leading up to it what's your existing or pre-existing golf experience going to this and then apply I mean, that to I made some balls i made some balls yeah, same no yeah. not much experience and it's not a fun game to me because i'm used to being good at stuff and i'm not good at hitting golf balls yeah it's infuriating, isn't it? it yes. Yeah. I like to be good at stuff, and I can't figure out how to be good at golf. Yeah. That's so, um, Lauren, any any perspective to share? Uh, you know, we got to show them the Bronco. They, they, they never experienced a Bronco, so it was like so many news going on at once. Mm-hmm. Any, any thoughts, Lauren? Yeah, I mean, some of them had never even been off-road in general before. And so if you haven't spent an 18-hour day in Johnson Valley – you know, from sun up to sundown, getting completely beat by the weather and the, you know, I I think we 
we opened their eyes to a whole new experience. Uh, it was, it was so much fun though. Like that, that's what it was all about was, you know, putting them into our environment, us seeing some of their environment. It, it was, it was a great group with, mm -hmm. with a wild ending that, like you said, we couldn't duplicate that again in a million tries. I don't think it was, it was, it was no magic, you know, no, no camera tricks, no nothing. It, it was, it was wild the way it, the day ended up. So, so everybody should go check it out. You'll, you'll, you you'll got, enjoy it. You've created a new piggyback tradition for hammers here. The, yeah, uh, it was, it was, it was. Epic in the desert. And, yeah. And I think, you know, maybe we need to do something around hammers, you know, but I'm already thinking of like the next location to do another fun hammer uh, cup invitational. Um, but yeah, make sure you guys go check it out. It's really worth the watch. It's, it's 30 minutes. But it's like a really good, great synergy, great vibe. Um, and it'll be, uh, it's on my YouTube, Von Gittin Jr. Or I think it's going to be called the, crazy, uh, the Craziest Golf Game Ever or something like Golfing with Broncos, something like that. But you'll find it. Look on our social okay. uh, for a link to it. But it was, uh, it was epic. And um, it was so fun, you know, using Broncos as caddies through the gnarly terrain and taking these off-road newbies up climbs like Chocolate Thunder and the crazy rock wall, you know, out, out there in the qualifying course and just bombing through the desert and stuff like that. Like it was, it was a lot of laughs, a lot of fun. And uh, now the last time that the fun runner LT will ever be seen. So it's a very special oh. uh, video as it, well. It, with that body on it, you'll see the fun runner LT yeah. again at some point. <laughs> True. You should make it, you should do like full golf cart livery on it for one of these things. Right. Uh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Um, Man, that yeah, that seems like a good time. I'm not I'm not a golfer, but that seems properly fun. And there's an endless list of opportunities here for events you can bring this to. True story. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Um, do we want to? I know we're a having internet uh, extreme difficulties and b <laughs> brushing up on you know last twenty minutes or so of our of our time here. Do we want to talk about the Optima Oasis quickly, and then uh, and maybe some RTR stuff. Sure. Yeah, I think, you know, um, Optima Oasis, you know, Optima is all about, you know, powering experiences, right? A little pun on the powering play, but, you know, they, they what truly drives them is giving experiences that no one else can give. And so this year for Hammers, they created the Optima Oasis and then a ton of activities around it. So the Oasis was set up at the forty. They had a big tent inside. They had a crazy cart drift track in there. You know, they were always, uh, you know, serving food um, and uh, just taking care of all their guests. They had, you know, electric vehicle runs in which we brought our uh, F-150 Lightning, the switch gear, which is a collaboration between RTR vehicles and uh, for performance, um, a vehicle we've been building for a couple of years. We debuted right around Hammers. And we took that on the, the tour with them. And then um, one of the other activities that they did was the second annual uh, Optima Batteries battle at the Soggy Dry Lake, which was pretty soggy this year. And basically what that is, is, you know, we get this plethora of unique vehicles. We had a freaking, you know, one of the new Porsche Dakars. We had a couple electric vehicles. We had a Sierra car. We had that freaking... Um, what's it? Grind hard plumbing, um, power wheels with a, you know, two Boxing stroke motor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, we had, you know, Raptor R Lauren, uh, we brought Bandito out and Lauren was driving it. We had the, the, um, big kahuna monster truck, which is fun to have her sponsor driver, Shane, um, and just a bunch of other cars. And basically myself and Chris Forsberg, are kind of lining up these battles and like a this versus that kind of negotiating mm -hmm. street racing style rules. Hey, this guy gets a jump. You get that. I mean, we had two Unimogs yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, so we just did these gnarly, gnarly drag races. Uh, we learned that Bandito um, is uh, as fast as a big block trophy truck. Lauren and Chris Pulverde went back and forth and, you know, Lauren won, Chris won. It was really who, who got off the line with the the right RPM for the door converter really is what I saw. Yeah. Um, it was, it was really cool. 
and uh, Optimo had the video coming out, so I'm not going to spoil how that went. But uh, it was it's really cool of Optimo to do this because it's all about the enthusiast. They brought mm-hmm. uh, hydrogen powered charging in for electric vehicles for their unplugged mm-hmm. experience, and it was really cool seeing electric vehicles out on the lake bed. Um, you know, such a such a unique experience driving an electric vehicle in the dirt with the torque, the low center of gravity, how it handles, how it drives. Uh, it's really really cool, and you know, I think while we're on that topic, I think it's worth saying that our my relationship with electric vehicles is not from that of political or being on board with any of these conspiracy theories around electric mm-hmm. it is comes from that of loving technology loving the opportunity to learn about it but also fun yep. right like that's that's our compass right being a fun mm-hmm. ever is not just something we say it's not a marketing thing like it's all about the fun and so that's what has engaged us <clears throat> And why we've been a front runner in electric performance vehicles, you know, now for a number of years with respect to doing the Mach E 1400 with the, uh, you know, the F-150 Lightning switch gear. It's it's a game changer from an experience, you know, and, and a lot of people are like, oh, well, uh, how much range do you get? You know, and everyone's like, oh, we're going to charge, you know, like all the negative. And it's like, well, yeah. how hard are you going to drive it? You know, if I go putting around, I got no range problems. Sure. If I'm going to be a complete jerk and drive it like my race car, which I do, I'm going to get about 50 miles compared to, you know, the 300 that you would get right. otherwise. It's right but before. if I drove yeah. it the same way on the street, I would still get the same 50 miles, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. So it's just that being out in the open on BLM land allows you to, you know, push the, the loud pedal as often as you want when it's safe, you know? So, or sorry, the not so loud pedal. We call it the go <laughs> pedal enough. <laughs> In the, the in the accelerator, switch yeah. What uh, how far out do you guys think we are from a, uh, a an electric? Because an EV Bronco would work great for hammers, you know. If theoretically you could get the power density and range out of it, you know, low center of gravity, like you said, you know, tons of torque. The second you plant your foot, and if you can manipulate where power is sent, you can crab walk and you know, pull the front end in places you can't with a standard drivetrain. Um, you think that's in the foreseeable future or are we still a bit of a way out here? Foreseeable, yes. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think I think the technology is there to do it right now and get like a top 10 and 4,400 class. I mean, we've done some studies on it and, and looked at it, but to, you know, to get a top 10, that could happen. I think stock class, I think you would have a very good chance um especially if you look at you know the the differences in the win and and second or you know the broncos times versus the rest of the class i think that that could certainly happen um now i I say that but everyone is catching up like it's been really cool to see the broncos come in the 4600 people not be stoked on it but do exactly what we expected to do which was elevate the class and elevate everybody and now everyone is pushing uh, super mm-hmm. hard, you know. You've got you know rumors of Toyota coming in, Jeep starting to look at things a bit. So I think it's it's been great what that's been doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but in general, um, I think to your point, we just need the battery technology to evolve a little bit more for more range. The density's mm-hmm. there, but you compromise the range with the power density. So right now, you need to hot swap batteries, which is doable. Um, but it's time. So yeah, it's exciting times, you know, and like, I, I just want to remind people that electric vehicles are an option. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like yeah. you have, you know, it's not like we got to turn in our gas cars and it's over. Like I'm not getting rid of my V8s, believe me, but I have a love mm-hmm. for electric and I, I'm talking a lot because Lauren has not experienced the switch gear yet. It didn't work <laughs> out. Um, you did drive my Mach-E while you're out here though, right? Lauren, so I'm did you try- I'm going to pick, I'm going to pick up my own Maki at lunch today. Nice. So I, uh, yep. yep. There you so go. I bought one for my I bought one for my daughter. She's 16. Um, I told her if she took care of. She's been driving for about a year now. I told her if she took care of her first car that and didn't get any wrecks or didn't have any problems that I'd kind of let her pick what she wanted. She picked a Maki. So I think there's a. She gets a little bit of an allowance to pay for her gas. Yeah. 
So she thinks she's outsmarting me. So right. <laughs> now she's going to come plug in the Mach-E at my, yeah. at my house on my electric bill every day. <laughs> And she's going to keep her gas money. I I, mm -hmm. I think that's it. But it really is the perfect vehicle for her. Smart. She's not driving across the country. You know, she's driving around town. She's driving to soccer practice. She's doing her stuff every day. She drives maybe 40 or 50 miles. And, mm -hmm. you know, no maintenance, nothing to do with it. I, I fully agree with Vaughn. Like the, the political BS that comes with electric cars, you know, that, that can go out the window. For her, she's going to have the fastest car in my garage now, I believe. She's pumped about she, that. And it, yeah. and she thinks it's so cool. She loves the technology. She loves everything about it. And so, mm -hmm. you know, we are going to have our first electric vehicle in my garage today. I oh. think it's pretty cool. That's wow. Good timing. Yeah. 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 Hey, well, you tell me about that in Hammers. And I love how she's like, I get to keep my, my money. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about that ended up working out on the back end. But yeah. it's really right. cool. You know, it's it's a right now it's a revolution. I was telling everyone today with switch gear, you know, like to date, that is the most capable production off-road vehicle, production-based off-road vehicle ever built. And all we did was the things that you would do if you wanted to enhance your Raptor or your F-150, right? Uh, you know, longer, lower arms, billet upper arm, uh, longer, um, you know, wider rear, mm -hmm. you know, it's got a rear independent suspension. So we kept that and we just modified it as like bolt-on stuff. Obviously we made the body look super amazing in a, in a collab design effort with us and Ford Performance. But it's very relevant to what you could do with your truck. Uh, of course, I put a handbrake in it because we got to be drifting. Yeah. And, you know, That's Lauren not... won't even drive a truck anymore without a handbrake. So I knew he was going to get in it. So I did that for him, too. And, um, uh, you know, so it's uh, it's really cool. And, you know, I think the thing is, like, we're looking at this truck right now. And, and the response and how much everyone is loving it has been great. And one day we're going to be in Johnson Valley and we're going to see all these electric vehicles rip in and just crushing it. And we're going to be like, remember when we broke, brought the first one out? Remember when we, mm -hmm. we created this deal, gave ride alongs. And I you know this is what I was kind of telling the media that I was giving rides to. And it's, it's a really cool moment. You know, it's very exciting if you look for the fun in it, you know, if you get jazzed up and, what's going on politically and people saying, Oh, 2035 in California, it's all yeah. electric cars or bust, you know, it's like, whatever. So yeah, it's, um, uh... it, it's, it's been very cool. And, and honestly, uh, life-changing experiences have happened for me driving electric vehicles because I'm so used to what a front engine, you know, higher center of gravity car or truck feels like the mach -E's are like go-karts. Like they're literally like go-karts, you know, the battery just feels like it just pulls the car to the ground and they're just, they're so fun. And, you know, yes, there's no sound. I mean, there is a sound experience, uh, which frankly I think could, could get better. And, and I have visions of, of helping evolve in the future, but you hear different things. There is sound. You just hear different things. Yep. Um, and so it's, it's very just conscious uh, of tires. <laughs> yes. Yes, you hear yeah. tires, and then when you're driving a switch gear through the desert, you just hear the, you know, the the terrain just ripping and shooting, bouncing off things, mm -hmm. and it just, it's cool. It's 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 a super cool experience. Uh, I wouldn't say I would trade it for internal combustion, but if you're a two vehicle family and you drive less than two three hundred miles a day, there's zero reason not to have an electric vehicle, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I yeah. agree with that. That's a hundred percent where I've been. On the on that idea there, my wife drives 15 miles total a day. Like an EV would be perfect for her. I just need yeah. those prices to come down a little bit, and then I'm on board. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're down. Oh, they're, they're down right now. And um, hey, Lauren, what's the Mach-E? What are you able to buy a Mach-E for right now? So we, I, I had Jesse, who's my co-driver, who runs dealerships and buys – uh, vehicles through auctions and trade-ins and stuff. So I had him watching for me for about the last month. Um, we got a 22 premium. So it's not the top level. It's like the mid level. Um, it's got 2000 miles on it and we picked it up for like 33. Oh so, my God. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I, I mean, it's almost a brand new car. Yeah. Yeah. And dude. that'll pay, I mean, like the gas, like there's so gratifying. That's a scam. Um, being able to, to, you know, every now and then, you know, drive by gas stations when I choose to drive my electric car with my gas car. Um, but, um, you know, it's, uh, 
it, it's it's so interesting to think about that. You know, if it fits your lifestyle, like that could pay. Like if you're paying three, four hundred bucks a month in gas, like you literally could pay for your car. Yep. Yeah. That yeah. was my daughter's argument. She's That's like, it's going to cost you eight to 10 bucks to fill it up. Probably. Yep. You know, yep. I don't know how much your electric is in New Mexico, but that's roughly what it is for me here in Charlotte. <laughs> so. Yeah, probably cheap. Yeah. No, we, we actually looked at replacing my wife's CX-5 with Maki probably a year and a half or two years ago. And the lease was like eight fifty a month. So we looked at each other and we were like, next time. And that next time's coming up. So. Yeah, Going back to Ford, you know. Yeah, I mean, I paid I, my GT. I paid close to a hundred. I think it was eighty some for it. Um, yeah. you know, but you know, there's there's some rebates right now going on. I think with you know federal rebates and Ford's adjusting prices, and you know, it's uh, we're we're it, we're in an interesting spot right now because I believe that there's such a label on electric vehicle owners and the politicalization of it. Like, if you are an electric vehicle yep, owner. Definitely you're this type of person and there's some people that maybe aren't comfortable enough, like putting that behind and just not associating with it and moving forward. And so I think that that's kind of hurt sales a bit. And so mm -hmm. right now people can benefit from, from that scenario, you know, um, yeah. again, it's just my opinion. It's not factual. It's just what I see and assume. Um, so yeah. And they're yeah. good. Good for, and and for getting herself a Maki. Good for her. What good negotiation one. Good first right. car. Apple, second, Apple doesn't second. fall too far from the tree when it comes to the negotiations, I guess. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well done. True well story. Done. Uh, so on the topic of, uh, of electric and future tech, as we start to wind down here, what are you guys looking forward to have, uh, have big plans for in 24? Oh, uh, schedule-wise, I guess we can talk about our schedule, Warren, because we just figured it out like three days ago. Yeah, I think that's still somewhat a little bit up in that's the air. Fresh, yeah. yeah, yeah, but yeah, we've... Um, Go ahead. I was gonna say that the next thing I think permanent on our schedule is uh running the Silver State 300. So, yeah. Vaughn and I have been talking talking about doing that the last couple of years. They actually canceled it right before we were gonna go last year, kind of broke our hearts a little bit, but uh, we're, we're really looking forward to that. Um, which will be a little bit of an endurance race. It'll be the longest race Vaughn's ever done. So we're gonna hmm. we're gonna see how how he likes doing. You know, a three hundred mile, probably seven, eight, ten hour race. Um, I I love endurance stuff. Like I did eighteen hours straight at the Baja One Thousand and the Ford Raptor R last hmm. year. To me, it, it's really a test of mind and body and everything to do with it. Um, so I, I'm excited to to share that with Vaughn where he hasn't hasn't seen that stuff yet. Um, and then after that, we're, we're looking at going down to do the Baja 500. We'll probably make some decisions if we want to split driving duties in one of our race trucks or run both race trucks down there, kind of make that decision after seeing how the Silver State 300 goes. Mm -hmm. um, the Prairie City Ultra 4 race at Hangtown, that's one that I love doing. It's short course stuff, similar to Crandon. And uh, great crowds. It's there at Hangtown. Um, it's it's. I've won that race a handful of times, and we always enjoy racing up there. And then uh, then we'll be at Crandon. We'll we'll never miss Crandon. It, that one, you know, Vaughn won it last year. I'd won it five times in a row before that. Mm -hmm. um, it's the crowd there. It's just electric. You know, there's fifty thousand people. They're the biggest fans of off road racing. It is so much fun, and and we look forward to that one every single year. And uh, after that, I'm sure we'll be down at Baja again for the 1000 Ford. Ford's kind of dreaming up what we're going to race down there and what we'll be doing for the 1000 again this year. Um, the Ultra Ford Nationals is in Davis, Oklahoma this year, which is kind of back to uh, to the, the central coast. We raced at Lake Havasu last year. And uh, so it's it's going to be an, an interesting schedule this year. But, you know, coming out of Hammers, we're so excited. And, you know, it was such a fun year. And we felt like we had such perfect race trucks and everything went really well that, you know, definitely excited to get out and get racing again. Yeah, we, we decided to not chase the full championship this year. We've been doing that a couple of years. Obviously, Lauren's won a couple. I won one. And just to choose some, you know, quality larger events, you know, Ultra 4, um, is is in like a transition year um and we just we've been talking about doing this and we just said hey you know what let's let's make it happen and um excited for what ultra four has got going on and and you know doing a few of those events but it's not necessarily a championship chase which is allowing us to mm -hmm. to 
diversify and get do a couple of these desert races and represent Ultra Four to this, you know, the more hardcore desert community. Um, so for me, that, that's a very personally exciting thing. We've got some really cool video projects planned. Um, we're going to be doing a shoot with El Bandito um, very soon, which is kind of our vision of a, a follow-up to Lauren's famous Milk Run video. So we've been conceptualizing this for about two years. It looks like we're going to execute it here in the next couple months. And probably a good idea, Lauren, for you, because some of their listeners and viewers might not know what Bandito is. And since that really was a majority of your brainchild, um, maybe just share what, what that is. Um, What's the 30 second know, elevator what, pitch for El Bandito? Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted a ultra four vehicle underneath the Bronco. So we're always off doing these crazy jumps and demos and that type of stuff in our really expensive race trucks. Vaughn has demo cars in the Mustangs. The comp cars don't go out and do this crazy stuff. And I'm like, why do we not have a demo vehicle? I'm I'm dreaming of this thing. So one of the very first Broncos that was built, uh, pre-production unit, it was the one that was up spinning around on the pedestal at KOH when we first got to see a Bronco. And it was going to be a crusher. And Vaughn and I kind of begged our way into letting, you know, telling Ford, hey, we need to do something special and cool mm -hmm. in that vehicle. Please let us keep it. I want to build this crazy demo truck and put an Ultra 4 truck underneath it. So we did, we took, we pretty much just used the cab area of this Bronco, but you know, it, it turned into exactly what we were saying, uh, you know, portals underneath it, 42 inch Nitto tires, you know, 26 inches of suspension travel, but it's got a GT 500 motor in it. That's, oh, you know, a Ford performance crate motor. And then we put a Whipple on it because that 750 oh, horsepower, yeah. that wasn't enough. We wanted a thousand horsepower. <laughs> That's what you need. Yeah. What runs on Jeez, runs geez. on shell pump gas. So we just head down to the shell gas station, fill it up with 91 octane at, at the pump gas station. Uh, you know, it's, uh, uh, but it is an absolutely amazing truck to drive. And, and I'm excited. I can't wait to, uh, to do some crazy stuff. You've seen us, you know, drifting it, shredding it at SEMA, jumping it off of sand dunes already, but it, it's time to put together a cool video and, and do yep. some crazy stuff with it. That deserves a show guys. Yeah. That's yes. good. Cool. It's rear wheel drive. It is all drive. Just all it's an drive. ultra four truck underneath it. Oh, I, wow. literally the suspension components and the drivetrain and that type of stuff. The rear end would bolt out of that truck and bolt into our race truck. So is it, the wheelbase the same too. Wheelbase is the same. Trailing arms the same. A arms the same. Everything's identical to our race trucks for for simplicity for spares. Jeez. If we blew up our race truck out in Baja, we'd drive Bandito out there into the desert, start pulling parts off of it, and put it on our race truck to get to the finish line. Oh, that's crazy. That's awesome. That's yeah. a good kind of crazy. We're on it is. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. We'll take a Dude, video it's of that. It's so anyway. clean underneath. Like, look, there's nothing hanging down at all. Yeah, yeah. we, we oh, made a it. team agreement that, that that truck does not see the rocks. <laughs> and that's the team. It's probably All right. Currently, <laughs> as, of this, as of this moment, February 20th, uh, 1156 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. Yep. <laughs> to say that's, 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 only desert yeah. no rock try to keep only it safe desert jumps, it can asshole. jump over rocks it can yes. jump over rocks okay no rock cross hey well, that's you got to take care of it that, that's a truck that deserves uh yeah no yeah it's crazy um cool so chris i don't know you have any other stuff you want to talk about nope i'm good i'm, oh, re cool. I'm ready to wrap up if you want yeah why don't you guys pitch your Sweet. shit Picture <laughs> stuff. What we, what yeah, what? I, I feel like we have. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We, we, you know, thank what you all for listening. Basically. Check us out uh, at Vaughn Gittin Jr. at Lauren Healy six yep. seven or just Lauren Healy. Just Lauren Healy. Yep. Underscore. Yeah. Underscore. Yeah. And uh, yeah, see you at Ultra Four events as always. Every event, free high fives and smiles on faces. You know. Yeah. Free high fives. <laughs> Stay optimistic. Yeah, Dave. I was I was googling how close Davis, Oklahoma, was to me. I was like, that's that's still a hot minute down there. So we'll see. Yeah, it's a bit. It's a great event. It's a lot lot to do there for spectators. You know, you can go out and wheel and chase the race and stuff too. It's a really cool facility, Crossbar Ranch. I think it's amazing. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, Ross, I'll do the standard wrap up. Rate review wherever you listen to podcasts. Like and subscribe on YouTube. 
Follow Vaughn at Vaughn Gittin Jr. Lauren Healy is at Lauren underscore Healy. RTR Vehicles, Fun Haver. What I miss. It feels like it. Thank you so That's much, it. guys. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, guys. See you on a bit. See you guys. Later, Lauren. See ya.